everyone, my name is Michael Glasser, and you're here for high security and access control. Is that what everybody's here for? Yeah. Really? I think, so. think so? Good. Everybody in the right room? Great. I came here today to give a basic overview of high security locks and access control electronics uh, with the main idea that everyone here probably has a question about something they've seen. I'm going to show you some new things that I guarantee you haven't seen, or hope you haven't seen. Some are prison devices. And uh, I've seen other lock picking talks where they go into a lot of detail about the functional parts of locks. So I'm here for a general overview because there's no way I can cover every lock out there. So if anyone has a question at any time, throw a hand in the air, I'll answer it. And if it's too technical, I'll tell you the ghost something. So let's get started. This is my ammo box. Army Navy stores are great. They really work well, too. Waterproof. First thing, if anyone went to the lock picking talk, this would be, I wish I had a camera here so everyone could see very much closer. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. So anyone who wants to look, go like this. And it'll work better. This is a basic cylinder. Everybody has one under the door somewhere, in their office, in their car, somewhere. There's a cylinder. The key goes in, it turns, everybody's happy. And if anyone went to the lock picking talk before, they understand how pins ride up and down and have shear lines. And if anyone doesn't understand that, play along. Because to go into details of that would take me 20 minutes to explain something very basic. Uh, not to question anybody, but that's just not what I'm here for today. So that's a basic pin tumbler, just pins. Now I'm going to go into something a little bit more, more bigger. -er. Okay. This is more bigger. -er. Little. Not so little. See, they're different. Now, this is a Folger Adams pin tumbler cylinder. It's very large. If you look in the keyway, that's the part where the key goes in. If you look in the keyway, you can see there are ball bearings because that way the key rolls in and out. It's also more pick resistant and a few other things I'm not going to go into the details of. But there's a very specific purpose for the cylinder. Has anyone here ever seen the cylinder before? Well, raise your hand if you have. Anybody? You have? What's it out of? What's it out of? Where did you see the cylinder? See, it's hard, isn't it? I hope you don't remember. Anybody else? What's it out of? Prison door. Very good. It's a prison door. This is a Folger Adams detention cylinder. If any of you guys know what this is, except for him, <laughs> stay away from my room. <laughs> and uh, that's what this is. This is what you go into many, many, most, most prisons in the United States. You'll see something like this. You're probably not going to be able to get your hands on these unless you know somebody because they're very much controlled so that people don't get information about them and don't play with them. If you can, more power to you, but it's really hard to get these. It just so happens I sell them, so it was easy to borrow one for a day. Let's go to something else. This is a piece of brass. This is a Nabob cylinder. Nabob is an Israeli company. And have ever, any of you ever heard of Multilock? Everybody say, yeah, yeah, I'm good, all those hands. Multilock uses a pin and pin system where on a normal cylinder you would have a pin with a, another pin on top of it, and when the shear line meets, it separates. In a multi-lock, you have a pin that's hollow with another pin inside of it, so that there's actually two pins that go up and down. Now, both shear lines have to match, which makes it a bitch to pick. They say it's pick resistant. Uh, I know a guy who picks them in like 30 seconds. I suck. It takes me like five minutes. But uh, most people cannot and probably will not be able to ever pick those. Um, the Bob came out and said, hey, Multilock's patent's up. Screw them. Let's make the same thing. So the Bob, using the same exact thing as Multilock with a different name on it. So if everyone comes across the Bob and they go, oh, this is new, this is great. No, it's not. It's Multilock from 10 years ago when the patent ran out. So that's the Bob. We'll get a little bit more electronic after I just go through the basic high security locks out there. This is what's called an ASA twin cylinder. Like, I really wish I had this camera right now. But anyway, so this is what's called an ASA twin cylinder. The way an ASA twin works, now ASA is the name of the company, ASA Abloy, uh, is the company that makes it. And a twin, because unlike a normal cylinder where it has one set of cuts, if you looked very closely at this, you would see actually a set of cuts on top and a set of cuts on the side. Now what that means is it's a bitch to pick. It's that simple. Why? Because you have to pick the top and you have to pick the side. The side, rather than being pins to sit on top, are pins that have a little finger that rides along the side of it. So it's very, very hard to pick. It's one of the hardest out there. I know guys who can do it. Uh, I personally can't. I've tried and have not been successful. It is pickable as they're all locks. It's a bitch, though. That's the Asset Twin. It's a very good lock. 
This is a fichet. If you can see the key from that direction, it's kind of funny looking. It's actually got four sets of um, things. What are them called? Pins. Four sets of pins in there. And uh, it's a bitch to cut. It's a, it's a bitch to pick because it just has a lot of it. It's supposed to be super high security, so my answer is get a drill and you drill it. But you didn't hear that from me. It works. When you're going to break into somewhere, you're probably not going to pick the lock unless you work for the government. And I'm sure somebody here works for the government and they say, yeah, burglars don't break in that way. Burglars break the window or they kick in the door. So if you want real security, you go out and you get like a Fox police lock with huge bars across the door. Or you put a couch in front of the door, something like that. A lock isn't going to keep somebody really determined out. I'm a volunteer fireman in New Jersey. And if I want to get into your door and my tools aren't working, I take my chainsaw and cut around the lock and I just open the door. So yes, it can be done, as hard as it might seem. Some people in the front are laughing. If the people are in the back aren't laughing, tell me why. I must be doing something wrong. Come on. I'm a social person here. This is called Miwa. Miwa, if you look at the key, don't look like very much because it has magnets in the sides. Now, instead of physically moving the pins back and forth, they use magnetism, which I'm sure everybody knows positive, negative, you know, sucky, sucky kind of thing. <laughs> everybody knows it. You can zook and poof if you put it the other way. And it just uses it that if the magnets are in the right direction, it moves the pin to the right place. If they're in the right place, the lock will open. It's called Miwa. It's from Japan. Um, they've actually just, Miwa America was just taken over by Miwa Japan again because they weren't doing too well at selling them. So you probably have never seen this. And if you have, then no power to you. Uh, the keys are easily made. You just take a magnet and you pound it in here with a hammer. That's how you make a key, literally. Take the little magnet and you put it on there and you go pop. And either it's positive or negative. Some of them are positive, negative, or sideways. Uh, because then you have the positive one side negative and I guess you guys can figure that out. Read right head, blah, blah, blah. How pickable are they? Uh, if you can get a magnet, let's move this sideways. If you can get a magnet that small in there, very easily. I designed a device, which I haven't had anybody engineer for me, and any of you guys are real good micro-engineers, call me, um, where it would just simply be the same exact thing as a key with a couple little reed heads to read the magnetism, positive, negative, or sideways, and then just go out and make my key with my little hammer and done. Beat it in 10 seconds. Or just invert the polarity and <laughs> really quickly done. This is Sergeant Standard Cylinder. Sergeant's a good brand. Competitor of mine at work, but they're still a good brand. I got a whole box of shit. This is what happens if you take a lock apart and forget to put the right tool in there. It kind of falls apart and you get a big hole in the middle. Uh, that's crap. That's crap. That's crap. Ah, this is crap too, but it's more expensive crap. <laughs> this is a concept high security lock. I have never seen these before, except I went to a friend's shop the other day, and I went, what the hell is that on your shelf? He's like, oh, I found this at the garage shelf for $5. So I bought it. It's just three sets of pill and tumblers. The only reason the key has four is because it looks cooler, and it's sharp. You can stab somebody with this thing. It's really sharp. And it's just three sets of pin tumblers. Concept is generally known for making their jimmy-proof locks, which if any of you have ever been to New York, I don't know if they have them out here. I'm from that area. It looks like there's almost three teeth, and when you close the door, there's another thing with three teeth, and it goes clunk, and a bolt goes down. That's a jimmy-proof or a slam uh, drop bolt, or there's a whole bunch of names for them. Concept's known for those because they make them, and they work well, and they're pretty. Uh, but they also happen to make this thing, which I found I thought was really cool, because I didn't have one. And now I do. And you don't. Uh, what's this? This is an old Corbin jumbo cylinder. If you look at a normal size cylinder, it's just a little bit bigger. There were multiple reasons for this. One, it gave you more master keying possibilities. If anyone knows about master keying, you're actually just adding more pins on top. It just makes life easier when you have more room to play with. So you have more combinations. It also was good because once you drilled out a hole in the door and you messed it up because you got drunk the night before and you kind of turned your drill sideways and left the mark, you drill out a bigger hole and you put a jumbo cylinder into the lock and then you cover up your hole. But don't ever mess up, and don't drink before working with power tools. It really sucks. But if anybody wants to buy me a drink while I'm up here, I'd be happy to take it. Uh, this is your Denny. Your Denny is another, another uh, dimple key system, much like the multi-lock. But the multi-lock has the pin and pin. This is just a standard dimple key. There's pins on top that, if you look at the key, it looks almost flat. They used to call them computer keys. They used to call them all kinds of things. It's just the pins are right on top of the key rather than being on the edge of the key. Uh, very high security, hard to pick, hard, impossible to pick. So you take one and you cut all the depth, the deepest they can possibly go, and then you can impression it, if you know what impressioning is, real quick. But basically what happens is you would take this key and you have different depths of the dimples where you just cut them all extra deep. Take a piece of tin foil or 
silver tape. Tape it across the top. Put it in there and start wiggling. Locks naturally want to work. So the tinfoil kind of starts to dent and dent and dent until it gets to the right spot and your lock opens. I know a guy, Barry, who I uh, met at the H2K conference. I was on the panel with him there. He could do that in about 15 seconds to most dimple locks. And I just looked at him and went, shit. <laughs> I didn't know that. Now I know because I never even thought of doing it that way. But hey, he's pretty damn good. I would plug his website, but I don't know off the top of my head. I look for Barry the Key Wells somewhere. He's smart. Lockpicking.nl. Who said that? Thank you, guy over there. Was I good over there? I didn't suck. I had a huge ass lock. I had a multi lock that was this big, but to take it out on the plane with me would have been a bitch. As was any of my electronics, because anything with flashy lights and buttons on a plane, it really, really pisses them off. I mean, they already, when I'm on the plane, I went I dress like this. Normally, I'm going to look like a biker. But I dress like this on the planes and for speeches. And I went on, they searched my shoes, they checked my pants, they checked my... Come on, I look like this. I should have dressed like a biker. They would let me through with my guns and knives and shit. <laughs> okay, that's everything out of that box. So that was my quick high security lock part. Does anybody have any questions on any locks they have in the house or anything? Oh, where the hell is Medico? Did that cover Medico? Somebody stole my medical locks. Actually, no, I, I must give them away or something. Yes, sir. BMW. Okay, well, we'll get to those in one second. I'm going to cover my call. I'll get right to that, though. The BMW uh, Sidewinder or Laser Cut Keys. Uh, as, if anybody's seen... One second. Um, if anybody's seen... Um, what is that? Uh, Gone in 60 Seconds, where he's talking about these laser cut, impossible to break keys. The laser cut has nothing to do with it. It's the transponder in there, which we'll get into all that in one second. Medical first. Medical is probably the most popular high-security lock in the United States. I think it's one of the greatest. It's a competitor of mine, but I still think it's a damn good lock. I'm supposed to be here talking about the Kaaba Pyramid lock, but my boss forgot to give me one, so I can't talk about it too much. That's a damn good lock, too. It's a dimple key system. Now, the Medico lock works in a very, very unique way. The pins that normally come up and down, up and down, up and down, still go up and down, up and down, up and down. But if you look at the tip of it, instead of being round, it's cut into like almost a slot. It's called a chisel point because it looks like a chisel. Now, this has to turn either center, left, or right, which makes it a real bitch to pick. Um, I know very few people who can possibly do it. Some claim they can do it every time because there's a little wire that can go in and feel around the corner. Uh, but it doesn't work on the new one. They fixed that problem. Hey, a photograph. Cool. Now, um, Medico, I think is a very good lock. I wish I had one to show you guys, but I messed up and don't have one. And that's where I'll leave that. But I'm sure you can find one around. They're very popular. Now, let's see. First, we talk BMW. Then we get to your... What was your question? Round locks you see on phones and common lock boxes. You mean where it's like a, it looks like a tubular thing, like a vending machine? Is that what you mean? Okay, I'll cover his first because yours is a little bit harder. Uh, tubular locks, instead of having the... Well, the guy who was here before, he had one with him. Is he still around somewhere? Yeah, hey, still around somewhere. Uh, he did this early in lock picking. Tubular locks work in the same concept, only a different functional way. Uh, instead of having the pins all in a straight line in, they're in a circle. And they work the same way, the same shear line. It's just like each one has its individual shear line. And all you do is you put it in, you're pushing all those pins in, and when it gets to the shear line, it turns. It's a very simple concept, but they're very easily beaten if, if poorly designed. Uh, because if the manufacturer doesn't build it extremely well, you can impression it, which I was talking about with these, really quickly. Same concept as a dimple key. They have a special tool for it that has a bunch of little metal fingers that go in there. and With the proper tool, you can impression those in 10 seconds, real quick, get it open. And it works just like a normal key. So you go up to a vending machine and I want a Coke. Doop! Open, open, open. Take your Coke out. Put it back. Doop, doop, doop. Lock it again. And then leave the 50 cents in the bottom saying, thanks for the Coke. And uh, never steal. It's not nice. I'm serious. No, I don't steal. Uh, and what else? The Sidewinder type keys. I'm sure if any of you have ever seen a new Volkswagen or BMW, any expensive keys, where it doesn't look like there are cuts in the end, it looks like this kind of sidewinder thingy looking thing, that's the key he's talking about. The way that works is just like any other key. It's just a different way of doing it. Now, the reason why it's hard to pick is because it's really hard to get your picks in there to work the, the wafers properly. But there's this guy named Randy Mize. He's a little southern guy with like two teeth. And he's, he works for a company called Lockmasters. Uh, he's a real nice guy also. One day he was at a, locks, a, uh, a car dealership and he was a locksmith who went to open a locked car. And it was a BMW which is deadlocked electronically, which for reasons I'm not going to get into, you can't open with standard tools because it relocks itself and all kinds of other bullshit that's real bad. And uh, well, it, is. it sucks when you have to open one. There are no ways to though. Shh, don't tell. 
And uh, so he decides he's just going to make, he wants to open it up. And the BMW dealership calls up headquarters and tells him we got a lot of locked out. We have a locksmith here. What's the easiest way to get it open? And the BMW guy goes, no fucking locksmith smart enough to open this car. And Randy gets so pissed off. He starts flipping out. What the fuck you mean? I can't open this. He starts, in you know, the biggest southern drawl he ever heard, starts screaming and yelling. And he goes out there and he looks with a pair of binoculars and reads the key by sight. And he goes, takes his hand file and cuts the key by hand, opens the door, says, fuck you, the dealer. And goes back and invents a lockpick for it. <laughs> So, after he's all pissed off, he goes back to shopping. It's called the Flip Pick, a Lockmaster sells it. There's also a European version, which is, I do not know if the European version is a copy of his or not. It was, they made their own, so I don't want to question that. I don't know if they made their own or just copied it. I know he invented his. He didn't see it anywhere else. So he made this thing, and he stick it in, and it feels it out, and it pops right open. You can pick these BMWs in like 10 seconds if you're good, right away. Really easy to learn, really easy to do, and so fuck them. <laughs> However, the transponder, which I mentioned before, is a little electronic computery thingy, which I'm sure you guys heard of electronic computery thingies. And uh, it's in the head of the key with a hidden serial number. And you can read off the transponder, you can clone it that way. But without the transponder number, to beat the computer is a real bitch. Um, I personally don't know very many easy ways to bypass the computer. You can't brute force it, they have timeouts on that. After three false keys, it goes 10 minute delay, shit like that, standard brute force stuff. And uh, it's a bitch. If you guys figure it out, call me up and we'll party. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a real bitch to beat the transponder system. Easiest way is to throw it in the back of a tow truck and drive the car away. <laughs> That'll steal almost any car. Okay, what else? Uh, okay, so I'm out of all this good lock stuff, unless anybody wants to learn about safe locks, but that's hard to learn, you know, public viewing without any good stuff behind me. What is behind me? I think they had a screen here before. Hand up, what's up? Electric lock picks. Okay, we're going to, we both didn't want to be on lock picking, but I'll, I'll give a real quick overview. When you're picking a lock, you're just trying to get all the shear lines to match. If anyone doesn't know what that is, the next 10 seconds of what I'm about to say is nothing to you guys. Next step up would be a pick gun, which forcibly takes, it's basically like pool balls. When you go play pool, if you hit the first cue ball, the next ball moves and the cue ball stays where it is, if you hit it real tight. So what it does is it hits the bottom pin, the top pin shoots up, and leaves a hole in the middle. So you shoot it up and you turn real quick. Now electric lock picks, it just takes a vibrator and extracts it to the back of a lock pick. Because it goes It does it really fast, faster than my hand can do it. It's the same concept, it smacks it and the other pin jumps up. So really quickly you can get into most places. On these locks it generally will not work, these are high security pick resistant bullshit, you know. And uh, I can't pick most of these, I'm not that good at picking locks, I don't claim to be. I know the theory behind it. But uh, blah 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 blah, good shit. Lock picks, electric lock picks are good shit if you want to get in somewhere quick. It takes no talent, no skill. Very little talent, very little skill. Uh, but you can do it. Talk to me. Uh, what about, I, I've seen some computer, you know, like supposedly computer designed picks, and they're like, you know, computer designed profile, and they look like rake Computer designed picks. What they are are basically rake picks. I'll get to you in one second, guy in the back. Uh, can, if I forget, raise your hand, raise your hand again, I'm dumb. Computer design picks take the most commonly designed patterns of lock setups and put them onto a pick and then you kind of wiggle the thing and rock it back and forth and you get lucky. That's what computer picks are. All you're doing is getting lucky because they're designed to the most common ways to, uh, the co most common patterns. Because most locks are not going to, there's certain tolerances, you will not have one, 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 pin depths all across because you take a thing and you go in and it opens. There's certain patterns that they try to follow in certain spacing. So computer picks are just the most common spacing in things. Guy in the back of the orange shirt. Marlock? I'm not familiar with it. That sounds to me like a, some kind of electronic access control device I do not know about. Um, if you tell me the name later, I'll write it down and I'll know for you tomorrow. I'll email you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what about? Uh, we're not up to that yet. That's the electronic access part. Thank you. Though. I'm, at this point, I'm still talking physical keys and locks and things that you can break with a hammer real easy. What's up? Mushroom pins are still completely used. All that does is make it harder to pick. Instead of having a smooth, a cylindrical, basically a can, like if you buy a can of soup, a smooth part, they take it and they cut a notch into it around the bottom edge so that when you go up there, it feels like a false movement and it makes it hard to pick. Mushroom pins are still commonly used in tons of things. American padlocks, GL still uses them, all kinds of good stuff. Anybody? Oh, sure. In the front and then you in the back. 
simplex locks, next part. I'm actually a manufacturer's rep for them. Uh, oh, the other guy in the company is. I work for the same company, though. Next. Controlled blank distribution. To me, getting a key isn't hard. To you, getting a restricted key should be a real bitch. What I mean by restricted keys is, you go out to the store, you have a quick set key, you go to Home Depot, you say, give me a copy, they say, sure. What happens when you have a business with you have employees and you don't want everybody making copies for the friends so they can come rob you? Or you don't trust your sister so you give her a key once and you want it back, you know she doesn't make any copies. You go with a restricted key system. Everybody has one in their wallet where it says best do not duplicate or ace do not duplicate. So you go out to the Home Depot guy and you say do not duplicate and you wipe it off with your thumb and he does it anyway. That's not really restricted. That was restricted like 15 years ago. Medico has restricted. ASA has restricted. Uh, there's all kinds of different restricted. The easiest way to do this, to, to explain it, is basically that there's different... Wow, I'm fucking this up pretty bad. I'm repeating myself here. This card systems is the first one. Let's go with medical card systems. You have a key. If you want a copy of your key, you come with a, basically a credit card, they swipe, it sends the information down to Medico, Medico sends back the key cuts, and they can do it. To get those key blanks, you have to be signed up with Medico as a medical authorized dealer, signing a whole non-cheating contract, you won't give away the keys, etc. ASA has the same kind of setup, a lot of other companies have the same kind of setup, you can't get the keys unless you're special. Uh, there's government issued keyways, Medico's government issued keyways, I personally still can't get. But then again, you go out and you take some liquid pewter, and you take your thumb and you push it against, you see a little imprint of it, and you push it down and you can make your own keys real quick. Just by impressioning the shape of the keyway. Use Play-Doh, hell. Impression the shape of the keyway, impression into some sand, pour in some pewter, and you got yourself a key. That defeats pretty much every key control method out there. However, don't do that because that's not very nice. Uh, I'm sorry for messing up the whole restricted key access thing. It's an easy concept to explain, but I'm not drunk enough yet. Uh, anyway, anybody else with uh, lock type questions? In the back in the orange shirt. Okay, master key systems. Would have been much better explained by the lock picking guy. Um, real quick though, uh, how am I on time? Maybe I have a watch? Everybody has a watch. I have 40 minutes. Wow, cool. We have lots of time. Last time I did this, I ran out like early. Okay, master key system. You have a pin. Now, anyone who's, if this is over your head, I apologize. I won't be long. You have a pin. You have a top pin. When they come together, the lock don't move. When they come apart at the shear line, it moves nice. Everybody's happy. Grand, great. Lock works. All a master key is, is you throw another pin in the middle. So you have multiple shear lines. By throwing another pin in the middle, now you can move either down here or up here. By doing that, you have multiple options, so different keys can work the same lock. Now, there's all kinds of standard issue master locksmith bullshit about how different master key system works. You have the AA, the BB, then the master, the grandmaster, the super grandmaster, all kinds of shit. Basically, if you have a master key, it's going to work, master key is going to work more than one lock. All the locks in the building are going to work on the same master key, so that the janitor doesn't have a huge ring on his belt. If the janitor has a huge ring on his belt, get a new locksmith. And that's it. Uh, if you need more info about, one second. If you need more info about master keys, uh, come talk to me after, buy me a drink. I love people who buy me drinks. I'll tell you anything you want to know about locks. You and then you. I'm sorry. You, you, and then you. Yes. Pick him first. You forgot your question. No problem. You and then nobody. Mathematical algorithms that figure shit out that I hate doing, so I have a computer program to do it for me. Basically, you have six pins or so. So you put different combinations where different keys will work different heights, and by putting different master chips in, you can get amazing... I can work, mess up a system where I'll have one key that'll work ten different locks, a different key that'll work five out of those ten different locks, a different key that'll work two out of those ten different locks, and a different key that'll work one out of those ten different locks. It's all math and computers and great shit. Go on the internet and you can find Master King very basically and there's programs out there for it. And I can teach you the algorithm for it if I remember it, which I don't. <laughs> it's very, very basic uh, mathematical calculations. Hey, yes, over there. Many, 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 many. And you can even put in more than two pins. I've done master key systems like, uh, if any of you have ever heard of IC Core, just one second. IC Core, where it's that best key that's kind of got the square head that says do not dupe, that everybody dupes anyway. Um, those are usually IC Core, which is interchangeable core keys. Those have the regular pin, then usually a master pin, 
then usually a change key pin, then a top pin, then a spring, then a cover plate, and then you put in the lock. So they, they can be a lot of freaking pins. That's why I talked about the Corbin Jumbo, which is just more room for more pins for better master key systems. Uh, yes? Much, much easier to pick. Much, much easier to pick master keys. I should have mentioned that. Thank you. Okay, wafers. Wafers are the same concept of moving up and down to a shear line, but as a rule, they're much easier to pick simply because the tolerances are less specific. Uh, in a wafer lock, instead of having a pin that goes up and down, you have a flat piece of metal that's shaped with a little cut in the middle. You put your key in, it moves the wafer either down or up. And the top and bottom have to line up with the outside edge, excuse me, of the cylinder, and it matches the shear line. Uh, that's a wafer. It, they're usually a lot easier to pick. I'd suggest learning not on them because they give you a false sense of uh, gratification. And then you turn around and try to pick your house like, no, and you're all disappointed. If you're going to learn how to pick a lock, go to a locksmith. You can't tell him why because he usually won't do it. But if he's a cool guy, you can ask him. Oh, you rock! I like you. <laughs> Holy shit! Come on, do you know how to pick locks at all? You ever practice picking before? Actually, after watching you and Barry, I contacted a party I found online. I said I was a bona fide locksmith. They sent me this whole cool pick kit and a little testing and learning kit. So I've been having a blast. Wait, you're a criminal. You said you're a bona fide locksmith and you're not. Actually, a bona fide locksmith, according to the statute, is anyone who picks locks for any legitimate reason. Education. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. That's a pretty cool guy. I like him. <laughs> hey, you know, have you practiced picking at all? Yeah. Come on up. Have any picks with you? <laughs> Don't worry, I am, I'm a horrible at picking locks. Don't worry. I bought this new pin kit yesterday, uh, pick kit yesterday because my last job as a locksmith before I turned into a suit and tie guy, which I generally refer to as a suit and tie asshole, um, my last job as a locksmith, I had to go unlock this lady's door. 100-year-old, million-year-old lady, she locked herself out. Shit happens. So I go there, I show up at the cheap quick set knob, I pick in like five seconds, put my tools down, say I'll be right back, I want to get my bill pad. She says, fine, I'll watch your stuff. Okay. So I show back up, she's inside, taking a piss, my tools are gone, my picks are gone, I went, ah, oh, fuck me. <laughs> so now I just bought a new pick set. Here you go, play. Uh, what's going to be pickable? Uh, not that one. You want to try to pick the prison, the prison lock? You ain't going to get it. Give me your shittiest lock. Shittiest lock. I get uh, three, three pin, no problem. Four pin, I get stuck. And five pin, I usually get nowhere. Well, the, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that good. Do you remember when H2... Yeah, pick the one with the hole in it. Like two weeks ago, man. No, that's cool. That's cool. I've been doing this since I was uh, really, really, really young. Yeah, play. Just don't break my shit. Um... I mean, it sucks because some people go in there and the biggest pick point of lock picking, which I don't want this to be on lock picking, but uh, yeah, why not? Um, the biggest thing with lock picking is most people put too much tension on the tension wrench, uh, which I'm not going to get into what a tension wrench is or what lock picks are, but basically they bend the shit out of my tools when I let them try the first time. So don't do that. No. Cool, thank you. Because you, you bind the pins too much, you end up not getting any. All kinds of good shit, bad shit happens. How do we turn that on? Is that my come to? Yeah, turn that on in case you want to say something good. I don't want these people to hear my dumbass comments. Man. Okay, good. <laughs> Oh, I see your hand up. Nobody's ever here. Stop clapping. It takes too goddamn long. <laughs> hey, you're laughing's okay, though. Yes. No, 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 no. I just learned about this last week, so I'm going to talk about this and be excited. Because I went out to a job where the construction key wasn't working, and I went, uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I showed up, and I went, this sucks. The guy's built it wrong. It was actually a manufacturer's error from somebody's line. I'm not going to mention who's not mine. Um, the way master, uh, construction keys work is they, instead of taking a master chip, they add in a little ball bearing in the place of the master chip. Now that ball bearing works just like a pin or anything else until you put in the master key. Oh, I'm sorry, the construction, the construction change key, construction removal key, I don't remember the name of it. It's a, what? No, it's not a normal house key. It looks just like any other key, it's just set up to a different combination. By being at that different combination, when you turn it, that construction master uh, ball bearing is just below the shear line, so it's the, it's the first pin. Now you turn to the right, or the left for that matter, and you see a little hole in the top usually. Now, you can see that ball bearing. The proper way is you turn it all the way around, and when it gets to the bottom, there's a hole drilled, and it just falls out the bottom. And once it falls out, it's not going to work anymore because there's no pin in there. And it's too small for the regular pin to fall out, but the ball bearing falls out and it won't work anymore. That's how construction master keying works. And as soon as you take the key out, it stops working from that point on. However, in the job I went to, they forgot to drill the hole in the bottom, so I had a hell of a time fixing all those locks. 
So I'm sitting there like 75 lock. God damn it. <laughs> Pull the thing apart, dump it out. Anyway, anybody else with lock questions? You get it yet? No. Why not? Come on, be cool. Oh, you are cool. You want me to be a... you work on this one while I work on okay. this one? Okay. Yeah, give, give me an attention wrench and a pick. And uh, give me a... Uh, yeah, that would do. What do you want a rake or a... Yeah, no, give me a, give me a diamond head. Or uh, like the little forky thingy. I don't like that one. <laughs> Hold on, I'm getting my toys. Uh, I just bought this pick set yesterday. I don't have them all organized like I like them yet. Oh, by the way, I really suck picking locks, so don't make fun of me. Uh, now, what are we up to? Anybody else with any lock questions? We're going to go electronic now. Okay, one last lock question, and we're we'll going to electronics. Last lock question in the middle on the white shirt. Okay, uh, office furniture locks, what they have in the back is usually a wafer that goes too high, and that holds the lock in place. Now, what you do is you take an extra long key, usually. It has a little notch on the tip, and you stick it in, and just pulls that t wafer down, and it lets you pull out the whole plug. And if you're really good, you don't even pick the lock. You just take a big stick in the back and pull down the wafer and pull the whole lock out. <laughs> uh, so talk to me, people. What do you want to know about electronics? Oh no, we're out of lock. Oh, okay, last one, real quick, real quick. Padlock. Padlock shims. That's a good fucking question. I didn't want to talk about that though. I talked to somebody about that at lunch. Yeah, um, there's a Shomer Tech as well. Yeah, those where? Do they have one? Like for like five dollars a set. Okay, um, good. Padlock shims. How many people here went to high school? <laughs> cool. How many people had that shitty master combination lock on the locker? How many people can open them in under a second? Then you're the cool people here. Reason why is, picture in the padlock. Um, well, I got padlocks here, but you can't really see too well. You have the shackly, th I can't do this, I'm not a good, okay, you have a shackly thingy. That's the part that goes down. It goes in the hole, and what happens is there's a little spring-loaded piece here. And when it goes in the hole, it goes past and then locks into a channel. This is spring-loaded with a notch on top so that once it locks in, it can't move, but it has to push this back somehow so there's a, uh, a bevel on it. So it locks in, so you take a padlock shim. You go in next to the shackle, and you push down. Since it does a bevel on, it just kind of pushes the spring piece back, and suddenly your lock's open. So you just take a little, take a three and a half inch floppy drive, and you rip off the little guard on the front of the disc, and you bend it into a little piece, and kind of round shit, and you stick it in, and it goes pop, and you open up all those things in about one second, and you go, wow, I'm cool. It's great. <laughs> That'll work on many, many padlocks, or some will have mechanical connections that will not let you do that. Um, those are more gooder, definitely more gooder. I like those better. Uh, they're also more expensive usually and all that good shit. So we're going to talk about electronics. Yeah, electronics, electrons. <laughs> Yay. Golly, golly, G, golly, golly, G. Okay. Why is there access control? Because somebody wanted to make money. That's it. Master key systems were working fine, but they're vulnerable. You go into access control. You have card systems. You have pins with uh, combination uh, keypads, you have uh, biometric fingerprint ID, retinal scan, uh, hand geometry, you got all kinds of good shit out there, voice, voice print. Now, you come up to a door, Let, I'm going to just use real life examples, because everybody here has probably been to at least one office where somebody walked up with a car and went boop, and the door opened. What that usually is, is going to be a couple different technologies. I'm gonna, the first one I'll go over, it'll be MagStripe, because everybody's got an ATM card or a credit card or a hotel room key, as somebody mentioned before. Um, and what that is, is just, if you ever had a VCR tape, it's the same shit. It's just magnetically encoded information on a little piece of film. Hey, cool, if I hit this, it makes a thump. That's fun. Um, so it's just magnetically information, encoded information on a piece of film. What happens then is it sends a little serial number or ID code out. Where does it go? To this box sitting in some back room called a control panel. So you have this reader, this card. Card goes to reader. Reader sends signal. Signal goes to control panel. Control panel goes, who the fuck is this? Looks at his little Microsoft Access database and goes, hey, look, we found Bob, number one, two, three, four. He's allowed to come in from five to nine. And right now it's 4.30, so fuck him. He's not coming in. And it doesn't open the door. Or it says, look, it's 6 o'clock, Bob's allowed in, okay. Or it says, I don't know what 5349 is, so let's deny him access. Access granted or access denied are your usual options. If you have other options, you're pretty cool. 
Yeah, the doors can open the doors. Nah, I control other things with access control. Um, I personally am the access control guy in my company. I also do CCTV and uh, all kinds of other good. I've done alarm systems. I'm licensed for it in New York State, but I don't. I'm not good at it. I don't like it. It's like just pulling wires through attics and crawl spaces until you get up to the high end shit, and that's cool. Question? Sure. What are some of the other options? Other options for access control? Ain't there yet? Hold up. Now, that was Magstripe. Proximity cards. Proximity cards are the ones where you just walk up, touch it, and keep walking. It's also a smart card, but let's not get into that. Walk up, just touch it, and keep walking. The way that works is by shit that I don't understand. It's a wire in a circle with a little chip in the middle, and it's got radio technology, and engineers explain it, and I didn't design it. What's up? I can tell you how that works. Are you an engineer? I'm not the engineer, but I know it well. I know, I know. I've played with it a lot. I know how it works. I just can't describe it well enough to teach it. I, I can describe it. But that's going to be a lot of details, and these people here are going to go, huh? No, no, no. Okay, describe it real quick. Come on up. No, come on up. Nobody can hear you otherwise. Clap, everybody. <laughs> Good. You talk, I'll pick. All right. Don't drink my beer. Okay, basically what you got is you got a big coil in there. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The sensor emanates a field, and when you put it near there, the field is, uh, causes induction in the coil and powers the chip. The chip says, oh, I'm awake. Okay, let me t start talking. It starts jabbering. And they talk back and forth as a result. And, uh, and what does it say? It says, let me in, damn it. Really? <laughs> in what language? Depends on what I've been drinking. See, I like it. That's that cool. the same technology used in uh, automated toll booth systems? No, that's different. Okay. That's different. I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, so that's proximity. Thank you, dude. What's your name? Wait, what's your name? You're going to be famous. What's your name? Rob. Rob what? Rob. Rob. <laughs> ah, come on. I gave my little name. Rob. What's your nick? What do you go by? Rogue? Shoten. I don't know what the hell that means. Okay, well, anyway. Cool guy Rob with the long hair. Buy him drinks. Okay. Oh, she's going to interview him now. She's cute, too. Wow, look at that. I want that next. Can I have a hug too? Great, everybody hold up. Come give me a hug. Everybody hold no. Everybody come on, clap for her. Come on, give me a hug. I love you. Thanks. Come visit me. Please. I love you. You are a goddess. Anyway, yeah, I'm used to ha hacker conventions where there's like one girl for every 3,000 guys. So I come to DEF CON, I'm kind of cool. It's like there's actual female population. And they're, and without, no girls get offended by this. They're not arm candy here. It's great. Because in, like, in New York where I am, a lot of them are just there with guys. And here I come here and girls are teaching me shit I've never even heard about before. I'm like, wow, cool. <laughs> anyway, anybody who got offended by that took it totally wrong, so don't. Okay, what are we up to? Uh, proximity. Let's go to smart cards, because uh, Isaac, if anybody knows Isaac, probably a lot of people do. Isaac taught me a lot about smart cards, um, but he was wrong, so I made fun of him. But uh, he taught me a lot about, there's conventional smart cards, and I investigated, and there's new wireless smart cards, which is very different technology. Because anyone who's uh, ever seen a, uh, let's pull this shit out. These are my H2K badges, because I'm cool. I went there, too. Okay, this was a smart card looks like on the front. If you look real closely at the shiny thing, would be contact points for it to connect to. They also have new wireless ones now. On the back, you see a Magstripe. Um, they just did this look cool. There was nothing on either of them. But I programmed mine to work in my hotel room because I want to be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so anyway, what else can I talk about? Hold on, I gotta drink beer. Beer makes you smarter. Or at least makes you think you're smarter. Is it my Okay, what were we talking about? Anybody? Anybody know? I don't, I don't remember. Electronics, oh yeah, cool. Mr. Electron runs from negative to positive. Okay, so that was basic proximity. That was basic smart cards. Smart cards are smarter than proximity. Proximity cards have a serial number embedded into them. They transmit when they connect, and they just send their serial number across. Very basic and shit. Smart cards now can have onboard computer chips, so that when they power up, by connecting those contacts or wirelessly by inductance. When they power up, they can actually do processing and all kinds of good shit. You can store memory on them, you can store fingerprints on them, you can store faces on them. You can store anything you possibly want on these smart cards. They have different capacities, they're great. I love them. I love selling them. Anybody who wants to buy one, talk to me. I'd be happy to sell it to you. Hey, Bobcat's in the back, wave to me. 
I just noticed him. He, hates, he really hates it when I do that. <laughs> anyway, so that's Smart Card. That's uh, Proximity, Magstripe. There's another one called Wigand out there. Now, Wigand confuses people because there's two things that Mr. Dr. Wigand invented. Well, there's a lot of things, but there's two popular ones. There's the Wigand Protocol, which is what a lot of access control devices use. There's ABA, which is American Bankers Association, and Wigand Protocols. Those are the two popular access control protocols. Uh, it also goes over IRS-45 and 232, but that all comes out of bullshit. I talk really fast in case you haven't noticed. Um, also, we again invented a kind of card. This card is great. I love the way it works. It's ridiculously easy to beat, but I love the way it works. It tastes, basically takes a piece of metal. You pick it. You rock. You picked it. Wait, clean my shit up before going back. Clean my shit up before going back. Come on, you picked it. Clean it up. He's cool though. He bought me a beer. He rocks. Anyway, so, no, thank you. Um, so Wigand basically takes a metal piece, really thin metal, and makes an image. A shape, or a square, or a circle, a perfect shape. And then you stick it next to a little x-ray machine type thingy. Well, it actually slides in. And it shoots Mr. Electron down through it. And it takes a, a, basically a photograph of that image. Compares it to its database and sees if it's the same. So how do you beat it? You sneak into the hospital, go up to the x-ray machine and hold it up, then you can see, or you see right through it, or you take all bright light and you can see right through it sometimes, and you take a piece of tinfoil and stick it, glue it to a piece of paper and you cut out the same shape, and you stick it in the hole and shit. <laughs> Oops, I just beat the whole system. But that only works if you do it right, and there's all kinds of other bullshit that keeps you from doing it. But anyway, I still haven't picked this. I feel nerdy. Okay, so what else are we going to do? Uh, that's Wigan. Let's talk protocols a little bit. The Wigan protocol basically just sends a serial number. Same with we, with ADA. But some way has to be between communicating from the reader to the control panel. And that's the Wigan protocol generally. There are other protocols. Now, there's a lot of things you can do with access control besides just controlling doors. You can set up different security levels, as I'm sure some people here know about. You can set up different time zones so people can go in from 9 to 5, 10 to 6. You can set up one-time users. Use your card once it stops working. That's great for uh, if you want to hire someone to go fix your bathroom. You give them a card, you say you go in once. After that, you can't go back in. There's a hundred reasons for it. There's great, great things. Now, does anybody have any questions? Because I'm sure there's going to be a few on electronic stuff. Easy pass. Easy pass. One second. Hey, question in the back. What was that? Moss Hamilton X08. My company is the manufacturer's rep for Moss Ham. I haven't gotten around to reading the literature yet. Uh, unless I'm wrong, uh, what is that? The, is that which is that? The padlock? No, that's the XO2. Oh, that's the electronic safe dial. Oh, that, that's the safe dial you're talking about, right? Okay, I've done a lot with Mass Ham safe dials, but I was always tired and screwing them on doors and busy. Um, Moss Hamilton has a very creative idea for safe dials, which I'm not going to get into safes, but real quick. They actually have a generator built in, so when you turn the outside of the dial, it creates electricity by turning with this thing called stuff, and <laughs> makes electricity, and once it does that, powers up the lock and goes beep beep, and you punch a new little code, and that's one way. I don't know if that's the XO8, I'm really not sure off the top of my head. I don't know those locks that well. But now that you create electricity, most, most of them are battery operated, or you have to plug in something. That's my Sam. Okay, let's, who wants to talk biometrics? Nobody. Fuck you guys. I do. Okay, yeah? No, no. Okay, anybody have any questions? You have a question? So, oh, the EasyPass question, I'm sorry. Okay, EasyPass is more gooder than proximity. Because what EasyPass is actually has a little battery in there, but they don't tell you that. And if you crack it open, it messes the thing up. EasyPass is a basic transducer system. I mean, if I'm using the wrong word, somebody pointed out and tell me I'm looking like an idiot. Uh, but EasyPass is a very basic transducer system. It's got an antenna. It's got an EasyPass. It goes under. It says, hey, yo, I'm here. Serial number. And the reader goes, okay. So, we're okay, you're out of money. That's the easy path. They're almost all the same. Yes, sir. How do you defeat the Magstripe block? With a hammer. <laughs> Magstripe is a very, very, I consider it a good technology. The easiest way is all you have to do is get your hand on somebody's card and you can copy it real quick with the proper technology. But to actually defeat the Magstripe block, there are Magstripe picks per se. I personally don't really believe in them because what they do is they try to brute force the mag stripe and you have to have the right protocol and everything and if you wrote your software right which I guess somebody here is probably programmed um, you could just make it stop after like three tries uh, yes over there easy pass only transmits when it goes near it, it gets hit by a signal and says yo what's up and sends it up 
I forgot which transmit would be great for tracking you. Don't you think? What? Uh, I do not. I'm not familiar with fast track. It's probably the same thing. They're almost all the same. Is that like, it's that around here? You put it in your car and you drive through a uh, toll booth. Yeah, they're, they're almost all the same. Yes. I don't know. Read the back of it. He asked what frequency it is. I don't know. What the fuck do I, know? <laughs> <laughs> I got one sitting on my top of my car. If you want to come back to my house in New Jersey, you can come look at it. Put stick a frequency counter next to it. How am I on time? Twenty minutes. Is anybody getting bored yet? Want to do some other cool shit? Okay, who's getting bored? Everybody raise your hand if you're bored, and I'm going to throw you all out. Okay. Juggle? I'm not good at that. I'll drop it on my foot and break my toes. Then you have to carry me home. Biometrics. Okay. Fingerprint, retinal, or uh, body geometry, hand geometry? What do you want to talk about? <laughs> retinal. No. What do you want? How do you defeat hand geometry readers? Stick your hand in it. Cut the guy's hand off. Stick it in the hole. Okay. You, real quick. Yep. Okay. Yes. Lasers. It burns your fingers off. Ah. It's shiny metal. What this is doing is it's. We'll do hand geometry first because it's very basic technology. Before we do retinal, we'll have to retinal in a second. It's just harder to explain unless you're an optometrist, which I'm not. Okay, hand geometry. You have a hand. It's your hand. Nobody else has the same hand. You stick it in this reader. You're punching your code. Once you punch your code in, it goes and checks its database and says, this guy's hand should look like this. Why does it do that? Because it's hard to identify anyone's hand. So it says, this guy's hand should look like this. If it doesn't look like that, it goes shit. If it does look bad, it goes good. It measures point to point, knuckle to knuckle, knuckle to another knuckle, tip to knuckle, thumb to pinky, the thickness of fingers. It random, samples random points. I personally don't like them. One, because they look like a toaster on the wall because it's huge. Come on, laugh. That was funny, wasn't it? Thank you, fuckers. Jeez. <laughs> at least I have a little bit. I'm not, what? Thank you. I mean, you're not even supposed to curse at these things. It could be underage. Anybody underage here? I'm sorry if you are. Are you really? How old are you? You're 16? Well, should I watch my language? No. Okay, thank you. Otherwise, I'd go to jail. I don't know. What's the legal age for cursing in this state? <laughs> um, okay, so I don't, where was I? Uh, what? Hand toasters. Oh, hand toasters. That's where we were. So it looks like a freaking toaster stacked on your wall. So I usually like to go with a small device. Uh, everybody, write this one down because you can smell my, buy my shit. Uh, Bioscript. It's B I O S C R Y P T. Uh, instead of IPD. And it's good stuff. It's fingerprint readers. Everybody's, no, not everybody. A lot of people here probably thought it was cool to go out and buy that compact mouse with the fingerprint reader in it. So everybody wanted to spend 100 bucks. Now you're the, because you have this computer security thing where you put your finger on it and it's going, and you kick it in. Uh, that samples about 15 points off your finger, makes a map of those points, stores it in its database, and pairs. My reader, because mine's more gooder, Instead of sampling points on your finger, sample the swirls, sample shapes. Because if you put your finger sideways or you get a cut, it deletes points. But those shapes are still there. If you cut a circle in half, you can still tell it's a circle. It just doesn't, it just has a cut down the middle. So mine samples 340 shapes off your finger. There samples 15 points, mine's 340. Mine's more gooder. However, you can turn down the security threshold if you have a problem. I've only ever had one problem with the reader, the Bioscript reader. And this was actually last week, and I'm so pissed still about it. I haven't solved the problem yet. Uh, there's this lovely gentleman who happens to be the CEO of a huge company. His entire company works, except for him. And there's over 500 people in this company, so screw me. And he puts his finger on. If you look at his finger real close, he has tons and tons of cracks in his finger. And because of the cracks, it's taking those cracks as shapes because he has tons of them. They're not cuts. Like if you cut your finger, it'll still work. If you draw ink on your finger, it'll still work. He has tons of cracks from age in his finger. And it's the only time I've ever seen it work. I've solved it with 90-year-olds. I've solved it with 100-year-olds. I've solved it with... In, on Park Ave, I have a building where on Packer Ave in New York, I'm sure people have heard of it, where uh, they have a bathroom, not a bathroom, a... Um, gym in the basement and all these old men like to come watch the girls exercise and then they don't want to have to carry keys so they walk downstairs put their finger on it but the older you get your fingers start to get cracked and wrinkled and also you lose in my reader it uses uh, conductivity of your finger uh, instead of capacitance so that it actually uses your fingers moisture content to conduct to see if there's a finger there the old men fingers get so dry and so cracked they won't even read it so they tell them to lick their finger and stick it on there and it works yes sir
breathing on the gate of the fog or something. Okay. Uh, what he says is a lot of these can be either can be breathed on and you go into the thing and leaves a little mark on there from where the fingerprint was from the grease in your finger. And a lot of them will go, oh, look, the same mark. Boop. And open. There's also the old gummy bear trick, which everybody's heard of on the internet. Where you take a gummy bear and you push it against there and it reads the oils. And then you can put it back on. And it looks just the same and it works. That won't work on mine. Screw you guys. We tried it really, really hard and we couldn't get it to false. Uh, what else? Biometrics. Uh, any questions about biometrics? Face recognition. Same concept as hand recognition. It's not that intelligent stuff. It just measures point to point, point to point, point to point, and measures your face. Retinal scan, I think, is cool. I don't sell any of those products. I'm hoping to bring one on soon. Retinal scan scans your retina. I'm not an optometrist, but I've looked at pictures of this stuff. First off, your finger can get cut off. If your eye gets cut off, it's going to be a little bit harder. Plus, your finger gets scraped, your fingers get dirty, you wear gloves in winter. You don't want to take your glove off for a biometric reader. Retinal scans, you walk up and you go like this. And it reads your eye. It reads the guts of your eye, basically. I'm not an optometrist, as I said. I don't know what guts of your eye. It reads the retina, but your retina is very specific to you. doesn't really change. If you die, it won't work because your pupil dilates and fucks it up the whole thing, uh, from what I understand. But retinal scan is a very great technology because your eye doesn't get scratched. Your eye doesn't change. You always have your eye with you. It, you can't exactly falsificate, falsificate, F the fakeificate, falsify, falsify, that's a good word. Falsify an eyeball without cutting it out like in that James Bond movie or whatever it was, Golden Eye, I think. I don't know. What's up? Talk to me. Active view color contacts and changing the retina. I have heard of it. It did not work. Uh, somebody got really drunk and tried it. Uh, he was an optometrist who decided to uh, design that. He went over to an engineer buddy of his and tried it, and they couldn't get it to false. Uh, I do not sell the one. I wish I did. Um, there are good ones out there. I don't know any names. Uh, first you, and then you and the farther back. It's a little bit louder. I know nothing about that. I do not know. If, I don't know enough about eyes to answer that question. He asked if people with cataracts would be a problem. I do not know the answer. Uh, one second. You first. That's a damn good question. <laughs> Smoking weed. I don't do that. But uh, I know other people do. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Um, if someone was to smoke a whole shitload of weed, um, their pupil would dilate not to the point of being dead. If you die from weed, you're just fucking lame. <laughs> um... Realistically, uh, it, your, your eye will not, pu your, your pupil should not dilate enough that that'll be a problem. I've never worked with the stuff personally hands on. I've installed one of them, I think. Uh, but I've never sold the stuff. I've never seen the tech specs on it extremely. Um, possible. You in one second, there was a guy over here first. I don't know who it was, but he's over there somewhere. There. Okay, he says the retinas are using the blood vessels on the back of your eye for a pattern. I know nothing about eyes. He, sounds like a good idea to me. Sounds true. I believe him. Why doesn't it work on dead people? Because your eye gets fucked up when you die. <laughs> You're dead. One second, she's first. Wherever she was. You forgot your question? No. Come on, what's your question? Yep. The optometrist is supposed to shit to dilate your pupils? Uh, no, because of that shit he just told me about reading the back of the eye. Well, that's a good question. It would have been good if you had said that. I wouldn't have known the answer. Uh, wait, because he asked first. Yes? If you can get to it, just short the two wires on it. And the box behind the reader. Okay. I'm going to give away the industry's biggest secret. Everybody write this one down. Come on. It's cool. I gave it away at the last comment. It was like, ah! It laughed for half an hour. Everybody's going to walk up to a door and see a keypad. It's going to say... Nothing. It's going to have a bunch of numbers on it, three little LEDs on the top. And you're going to look at it and go, hmm, I wonder if I could rip this off the wall and short the two wires in the back. So you can take your little screwdriver and unscrew it off the single gang box and look in the back. There's a relay there. Short those wires and you're opening the door. I'd say about 80% of the locksmiths out there, nothing gets locksmiths. I was locksmith for a lot of years. I have great respect. But a lot of them, not a lot, not all, do not know much about electronics. And they don't know that having a relay on the back is insecure. So if you unscrew it off the wall and you short those two wires, you can get into like 80% of the doors out there with that kind of keypad. Uh, two guys didn't laugh. Everybody else did at the other con. Oh, screw you guys. Yes, right over there. Oh, uh, you're, ne you're, you're, you're next, and then you. Yes. Uh, what about iris scan? Iris scan. Um, I don't know anything about it. I can't answer that question. Probably the same concept. Yeah. 
Probably the same concept as retinal scan. I don't know enough about eyeballs. Uh, I, I got one here, I got one here. That's about all I know. Uh, you, and did I miss anybody? I missed somebody over here. One second. Yes, you. Mechanical locks? Okay, sure. Oh, the simplex push button locks. <sighs> In the simplex push button lock, we'll get back to electronics and biometrics in one second. Simplex push button locks, there's a whole bunch of little wheels inside, and there's a cut in it. Every, excuse me, every time you push the button, any button, all the wheels turn one time. Depending on which button you push, that wheel turns two times. So what you do is you go in there, you hit a button. You push a number one, number one turns two clicks, all the other wheels turn one click. Push number three, number one turns one click, number three turns two clicks, and all the other ones turn one click. Now by doing that, it's simply turning them all until all the slots line up. Once the slots line up, you turn the handle, the bar goes in. If the bar doesn't go in, the little piece on the inside goes up, and it doesn't unlock the door. If the bar goes in, the little piece on the inside goes down, door unlocks. Very, very simple technology, very good. There's a new Ilco 5000 series coming out, which has an enter button on it, where you push your code and hit enter and then open the lock. Uh, same concept, just looks sleeker. Uh, there's somebody over here, right? Yeah. Talk to me. Okay, I know what he's talking about. It's really cool shit. <laughs> it scans the way your brain works and the densities of your brain and the electrical shit and the woo. <laughs> it's that's way over my head. And I'll talk to a neurologist about it. Uh, how am I on time, anybody? I'm fine. I'm not asking you. No, <laughs> that's cool. I don't want to go over you. Kick my ass. I know. Okay, so talk to me. Anybody else with questions? There's a guy in the yellow shirt with a hand up. Those in Times Square. Wow, new facial recognition in Times Square. No, but well, next week. Oh, okay. I have heard about this. Uh, this is a very Big Brother-esque technology. What they're doing is they're taking facial recognition. One, se you know a lot about this, or you know something about it? Come on up. We love her. Everybody, clap. Grab a mic. It's actually anybody who wants to do research on this. They actually are already using this in London. So if you want to go to London, at the entrances, all the entrances to London, they, they have face recognition that checks every single face that comes into London. If you're a criminal, it automatically sets an alarm that goes off and lets them know that this person has entered the city. Like the, the concept behind it is, is that if you're a criminal and you're in the city, okay, we can't do much about it. If you leave the city and you come back, now we know. And this is the same thing that they're putting into Times Square. They now hacked they your soul. Uh, sunglasses and that kind of shit don't affect facial recognition very much. Um, well, he's raising a hand a whole lot, so I'm going to ask, yeah, what do you want? Okay. Uh-huh. That's cool. Hold on. Let, me, let me get that over the microphone because you can't hear. One second for you. Um, am I on time or are you just... Sorry, yes, what's that? In London. Yeah, go for it. Grab the mic. Um, in London, that's the, talking about that system, but you can get past it, and there's already a system in New York to get past it. It's some routing software that will route you through New York City. Um, it'll tell you where you can go where there are no cameras. Really great system. Of course, going to Times Square, you can't. Yeah. Or if you're one more second, I'm sorry. If you, um, if you're really cool, you go out and you find off the internet. I know somebody who has them. Uh, you get a Kevin Mitnick mask and you stick it in your face, <laughs> and uh, then you're really cool and you get all kinds of fucked. Okay, yes, because you're waving your hand like crazy. What's up? Sunglasses, a fake beard, a fake mustache, uh, a big hat, and, and weird ears. And yes, you will get past it if you have all that shit on you. <laughs> if he just put sunglasses and a fake beard on, then they have shitty software. If, then they have shitty software. Tell them to write some better. Yeah, I think one of the things that I heard when I was re researching about the London is, is that if you're able to change your face or cover more than 35 to 50 percent of your face, that then it's much more difficult for them to recognize who you are. So, like people had on um, 
that, like a big hat that covers like enough of their face with their eyes and then they put on a mustache or something then they can't get enough points on your face so yeah but then you also really look like you're trying to hide so but oh, by the way before he walks away everybody clap for the DEF CON goons they're doing a great job <laughs> I love you. Mommy, I love you. Oh, give me a hug. I love you too. Okay, wait. Nobody here ever gets my card. She's getting one. Oh, is that Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Sit down. No hugs. No, no. Yes, guy in the middle. And then you. Oh, I'm sorry. You, then you, then you. Blunt trauma to the face. If you're willing to smack yourself in the face with a hammer to get around this shit, screw you. Come on. You're worth it. You, then you. Then you. Yes, you. Who makes the random ass brain scanning? Random ass brain scanning. I have no idea whatsoever. There was a guy over there who was talking about it. Do you know the name of the random ass brain scanning? Uh, no, but I saw it on TLC. TLC, the loading channel makes it. The loading channel makes everything. Uh, guy in the front. Cool, cool guy with long hair. Thank you. They're, they're using uh, facial recognition from casinos now. Yeah. Facial recognition in the casinos? Yeah, yeah. Tampa too. <laughs> no going to casinos anymore in Las Vegas forever and ever, according to him. Uh, the guy over there who had his hand up. Yeah, um, I think that, like, if the, the false positive and the false positive and the negative rates are so high, like, you just add, like, five masks to the, you know, with accuracy, especially someone on the LAX, with the accuracy. False positives and false negatives are really a big problem, according to him and him and him and him and him and him and him. And him. Uh, I don't know very much about the facial recognition's false positive and negative rate. My fingerprint reader is really good, though. <laughs> uh, who are we up to? Yes, dude over there. We're running out of time, so real fast. Measuring distance between your eyes is a very common technology. Um, however, a lot of people can false because of that. Uh, they say it's impossible, no one's exact. Fuck you. It, it happens. Uh, anybody else? Or how am I on time? No, camera dude, you're in charge. How am I on time? Three minutes. Three minutes! Cool. Everybody start counting. Um, who else you got? Everybody's walking out. Don't leave me early, I miss you. Okay. Guy over there with the beard. Can you use a gel co coating on your finger to defeat the thumbprint reader? Yep. Some, yes. The gummy bear trick, I mentioned that before. The gummy bear trick works on some readers, not on mine. We tried it, we tried it, we tried it, we tried it more. I know one way that uh, there's some guy out of, I think he was out of Germany, that uses a, uh, no, Japan, that uses a uh, circuit board uh, printer to print um, the uh, traces. I can trace the fingerprint exactly. I heard that works, but I'm not sure. Uh, guy in the back, then guy in the side. Guy in the back. Louder. Um, the way that works is generally that all they do is they check it and then they output a signal. So what they do is it'll, the facial recognition will be all in board and then if it says okay, it'll output a weekend signal or output an ABA signal. Uh, same with my, my biometric reader, reads the finger, checks it against its own internal database, then outputs the weekend signal. The whole database is something I don't know about. I'm assuming it's all irises. It's all computer algorithms actually. Um, I really don't know too much about, I think guy in the yellow shirt was next. Tricking my fingerprint reader, hitting with a hammer and knocking it off the wall is the way to do a denial of service attack. Otherwise, you go in the back room and you short the two wires on the control panel in the locked room behind the armed guard. My fingerprint reader is pretty good. It's rated number one uh, in the U.S. I think the world, but I'm not sure, so I can't say it. it it's a damn good reader. Um, I don't sell to this area, so nobody here is going to make me money, but I'm being honest, it's a damn good reader. I only sell New York, New Jersey. So if anybody here wants to buy it there, come on over. Uh, yes, guy on the floor. Is there any way to pick up the solenoid? So even though you can't get the thing to trip, you can do something and make the solenoid pop? Is there any good way to fake out the solenoid? Uh, by solenoid, you mean electric lock or mag lock or any other device like that, I understand. Um, yeah, yeah, take... Uh, a pokey wire and a pokey wire and you stick it over the top of the door and you go poop really closely or you pop the drop ceiling style the, the, if you have a drop ceiling you get up on a ladder and you pop the tile and you reach down and you go beep that works too uh, regularly I've heard that if you pump like I think it was like 476 megahertz into it or like 500 watts it'll fuck up some of that stuff real bad uh, I'm not sure about the details of it uh, go over there Yes. 
On, according to a fire code, when you have a mag lock on the door, uh, you have to have a request to exit device. Actually, redundant request to exit device, such as a push button and a motion detector. What she's saying, I'm out of time. Real quick, a motion detector, what you would do is um, you walk up to the door, the motion detector sees you, lets you out. Or you hit the button, and that lets you out. The reason for the button is in case the motion detector doesn't work. We're out of time. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Welcome to DEF CON.